And I'm going to do a very practical demonstration of a very simple wire antenna for shortwave. We're going to be using uh, literally speaker wire. Um, I'm not even bothering to split it because I might want to use it as speaker wire again. We're just going to throw this up and see what sort of uh, results we get with an RSP1A. So the setup I've got here is um, a laptop running Windows 10 and we've already installed SDR Uno, the software, onto it. Coming out of the USB socket is a cable to an RSP1A and most of what we're doing here you could do directly on the coax socket but for convenience I've bought this uh, little extension coax uh, cable which has a chunky SO239 or UHF um, connector on the end of it. Of course what we're interested here is in shortwave to begin with um, and a very active uh, shortwave broadcast band is the 49 meter band. Uh, the amateur band on 40 meters is quite close and these frequencies you can usually pick something up um, if you're within a few hundred miles of civilization um, at most times of day and night so that's why we're picking that to start with. Um, what we're going to do is have an, a wire antenna that's suitable for that type of frequency. Now the absolute length of a wire antenna for shortwave is not at all critical so you'll still be able to pick up uh, all the way down to probably medium wave um, with just a wire antenna and I'm suggesting we're going to make our wire antenna about 40 feet long which is roughly 12 meters 12 meters is roughly a quarter of a wavelength lambda being the wavelength of the frequencies involved and that we're trying to look at so why a quarter wave well very crudely speaking over here i've just sketched out if you imagine the um rf waveform the actual radio signal which has got both a magnetic and an electric component um, if you have a piece of wire that's a quarter of a wavelength, if you imagine uh, instantaneously at any moment in time across that length of wire intersecting it, any um, radio waves in, of these frequencies will have the maximum uh, differential in electrical voltage between um, one end and the other. That means you're, you've got the potential to have the strongest possible a signal coming into your radio. So coming back to our setup here we've got as you see the PC, we've got the RSP, the SDR play RSP and now we're going to play with a quarter wavelength approximately of uh, the speaker wire. So here's our setup again just outside the edge of a field here. And so what you want to do is uh, just find some convenient place to sling up our, our uh, 12 metres of wire. I've um, decided to uh, just take a length of uh, yellow string here and I'm going to actually uh, throw it up over, um, over this uh, sort of tree behind me. Not particularly high but just enough to uh, demonstrate the principle. Here we go then. Take, uh, unravel a length of it. There it goes over the top. Good old cable tie. Let's make a temporary knot. Okay, there's uh, one end of our wire antenna. So there's our uh, 12 metres of uh, speaker wire, uh, barely two metres off the ground and coming down to our connection point uh, for the antenna here. So for this demo I've just twisted the wires together all the copper strands and I'm going to bend that over and uh, stick it in the centre of the, uh, 
with the antenna socket. There we go, so the uh, speaker wire is now in the centre of the antenna socket. Make sure that no little strands are shorting across to the, uh, the outer of the, uh, of the coax. So this is June, the sun is overhead and actually conditions are pretty hard going for uh, the 49 metre band, which is good because this will demonstrate um, what the benefits are of adding a decent ground or counterpoise. So as we stand with just that um, quarter wave, approximate 12 metres of uh, wire antenna, um, we're hearing very little on uh, 6085, which is um, where Radio Mi Amigo should be, um, and that's coming from northern Germany. We're here in the UK. I'm now going to add um, some kind of ground here using just a copper rod. I'm going to just bash it into the ground uh, probably about um, half a metre or so just to uh, give us um, a decent, uh, decent ground. So the um, copper rod is in the ground. It's gone in about 20 or 30 centimetres. Um, so uh, probably only just a, a foot, I would say. Um, we're just going to attach a, a clip to it. And we're going to then take the other end, which I've attached to another alligator or crocodile clip, and we'll actually connect it to the um, outer of the coax connection. Um, ideally as close to the... Um, radio as possible. There we are. And now I don't know if you could have heard the audio in the background. We had absolutely nothing until we added that clip. And now we're starting to, to hear some audio. Like I say, this is 6085 kilohertz. And we're getting pretty good audio. Bear in mind this is sort of middle of the day, full ionisation from the sun in June. But we're now, we now have a signal which is a uh, good 22 beams above the noise. And that is just the difference caused by adding a decent ground connection. So that's without, it's about 10 dBs above the noise floor. Adding the clip, adding the ground. And the signal comes up considerably. Now this ground here is kind of Bedfordshire clay. Um, it hasn't rained for a few days so the quality of the ground obviously is affected by how moist it is. I'm going to add some water now see what that does. So that is the effect water to make my ground that bit more effective. Not a very scientific test but I think consistently the signal's rising out of the noise thanks to this, uh, this better ground. One of the problems you may have is that you, have, you maybe live upstairs uh, in an apartment, you don't have access to a good ground so um, instead of a ground, a, a counterpoise is, uh, is a very good alternative and we're going to just demonstrate the use of a counterpoise. So I'm going to take another length of cable and just uh, for consistency we'll carry on with the 49 metre band. So I'm going to make this about 12 metres as well. So I'm just going to pace out 12 metres from here and then we'll, um, we'll cut the cable. Oh, 
meters and I've got this length of cable now 12 meters long and so just the same length as the actual antenna that's in the air and I'm going to now connect this to the uh, the outer of the coax and just lie it along the ground So this, this is with no counterpoise that's with the counterpoise So here we are with no counterpoise, no counterpoise, very poor signal. We had the counterpoise and the signal definitely improves. Possibly not quite as good as that ground, but very impressive. That is the counterpoise, which as I say is just a 12 meter length of wire lying on the ground and in fact that would work just as well if you were on a first floor apartment so the power of a counterpoise adding the ground to the counterpoise as well all adds to the uh, strength of the signal there we are now we've got the um, the ground copper rod there it is and the black wire counterpoise in addition to our wire antenna and now it's almost uh, listenable to don't be put off by how poor the conditions are on the 49 meter band in the middle of the day here in the UK um, middle of summer um, I just popped up onto the 22 meter band and um, Plenty of signals. Who was killed by the very serpent he had saved by warming it back to life on his chest, and it was nearly frozen to death. So, plenty of uh, stations to choose from just using a 12 meter piece of wire and having a good counterpoise and uh, ideally a ground as well but uh, either one will make a big difference to just a piece of wire going to the center of the uh, antenna socket so i hope i've given you an idea of what you can do with a, a wire antenna um, if you're really restricted for space then um, the magnetic loop really is uh, a very good option. Uh, we'll just finish off with a, a demo. This is a Wellbrook um, magnetic loop and uh, covers most frequencies below 30 megahertz. So it's actually good all the way down to uh, long wave and uh, below. So let's, uh, let's have a last look. Um, I'm just going to mount this. Um, just a couple of meters above the ground here, and uh, and plug it in and see what we uh, what we how we perform. So there's the, uh, the mag loop that um, I appreciate it's outside here, but um, it could be on a balcony or can be indoors. Very immune to electrical uh, interference. So we go back uh, on 6085 kilohertz, and in fact um, we're getting a very good signal. Mag loop doing a super job there. And here is a mag loop indoors, um, just uh, up against the wall, and obviously not brilliant, but there's a difficult signal 6085 coming through, pretty comparable to the out outdoor wire antenna. And just to finish up here, this is on 40 meters with that indoor mag loop 
on a ground floor um, just shows the possibilities if you can't get your antenna outside. So hopefully we've covered there um, what you can do with a wire antenna, the importance of some kind of counterpoise or ground and indeed if you're really stuck then the fact that a bank loop can uh, also be a great uh, resource for shortwave listening. Thank you for watching.